We're good? Uh, okay, just so you, here, here's kind of the format for today. Uh, Coach is going to come up and talk to you guys for a few minutes. He's going to introduce our two uh, new offensive coaches. Uh, he'll take questions uh, from you guys for a few minutes, and then we'll bring up Jake. Uh, he'll make a couple of remarks, and he'll take questions, and then we'll follow with DJ. So um, today is uh, about the offensive guys and our new additions to the staff, and uh, so we appreciate uh, you all being here. And then just a reminder, if you can put in the chat, uh, if you have a question, and I'll go through and unmute your line. And if you have a follow-up, uh, feel free to ask. But if you're done, just please mute your, your line again. Um, we will get started. Uh, Coach, whenever you're ready. All right. Good morning, guys. Good to see everybody. Uh, extremely excited. Uh, we started doing our research. Uh, Derek Panassi did a tremendous job of researching the best candidates that uh, – to come here and bring back a championship offense to LSU. And obviously, we leaned hard on Joe Brady, who we thought uh, was uh, instrumental in helping us win in the championship, obviously. And uh, these two young men came highly recommended. Jake Peets is our offensive coordinator, quarterback coach, 10 years in the NFL. A tremendous job. I think that uh, if Joe were to leave, he would have been calling plays at Carolina. Uh, his head coach had tremendous, tremendous things to say about him. Uh, we did our research on him, and he's come in here, and he's he's been better than we thought he was going to be, to be honest with you. Uh, his uh, leadership skills, his organization, there's already a change in the office. He's talked to all the players. Uh, they're excited. He's talked to the players' parents. They're excited about him. Uh, so I think Jake is going to do a tremendous job. DJ Mangus was instrumental in our championship season. He worked hand-in-hand -hand with Joe Brady, uh, left, went to Carolina. Uh, we missed him. Uh, he knows Joe's offense. He knows the Saints' passing game. He has already brought some uh, fire to our, uh, him and Jake, both of uh, them, brought some fire to our offense. They're excited about it. Uh, the receivers are excited. The quarterbacks are excited. Our whole offense is excited. And, you know, our offensive line coming back and all the guys we got coming back, we feel that we have a tremendous uh, offense. Very excited for these guys. Uh, still looking uh, for the best fit for a defensive coordinator. Uh, we still have three spots left on defense that uh, we're going to fill. I'm looking to fill the defensive coordinator spot first. Then we have a safeties coach and our linebackers coach or D-line coach. It depends what the coordinator will coach himself. Any questions? Hey, Coach Joe Garland, Yellen Fox State here in New Orleans. Um, you're, you're, you have four scholarship quarterbacks for this spring ball. Uh, the three guys I've got to start this past uh, fall, uh, both got they, they got some starts, but not a lot of experience. Which of these coaches, Pete or Mangus, is going to be kind of the quarterback guru? The, who's going to be in the room with these four guys, developing these guys? Because all of them still need a lot of work going forward. Yeah, oh, Jake, Jake's the quarterback coach. Yeah, Jake's the quarterback coach, and DJ's going to coach wide receivers with Mickey. And Jake is a tremendous quarterback coach and fundamentals. And uh, he's going to be in there and has already uh, showed some different things to our quarterbacks that they need to do and is going to do a great job for us. Um, hey, Coach, this is Shay Dixon. Um, you said when you hired these guys that you wanted to go back to the 2019 offense. That was yeah. a focal point. I guess from a philosophy standpoint, when you think of the 2019 offense, what do you think of? You know, I think of, uh, you know, empty package. I think that uh, lookovers, uh, you know, guys wide open, running running down the field, uh, making tremendous explosive plays, but also a short passing game. I think, uh, you know, Joe Burrow making some tremendous uh, calls at the line of scrimmage. I think of Steve Ensminger and Joe Brady making some tremendous calls in championship games, uh, giving the balls to our playmakers in space and letting them play. You know, I just think that these guys are going to do a tremendous job of doing that. We got some great players coming back, and I'm excited about our offense. Hey, Ed, what, what led you to believe that there needed to be a change to be made on offense, and what in these two guys yeah. are what you'll bring and what you want yeah. in the offense going forward? Yeah, first of all, you know, I, I'm very appreciative of the job Steve Ensminger did. I love Steve. Played here. 
a great tiger, a great friend of mine. Uh, he helped me out when I needed a change, when I needed to change their culture and that offensive room, and he did it. He brought tremendous leadership. Like I said, he was like John Wayne every day. But, you know, he was getting older, and I knew it was time for him to retire. I, I could feel it. Uh, he was getting tired. He gets in the morning, office in the morning at 5, gets out at 10 o'clock, and it was just time. I just felt it. And uh, we, I wanted to go back to the things that we were doing. But you know what? Steve was a pro-style coach, uh, and he learned the spread under Joe. But obviously, you're not going to learn everything because that's not what you do. So I wanted to bring the guys that are experts in the spread offense, and uh, I got both of them, and I'm so excited about it. Hey, Coach. Uh, you mentioned, I think, on the radio show a couple of days ago, you know, Jake and TJ had already been talking to the players. I mean, just what has been your impression of the players' impression of both of those guys and just kind of yeah. how those conversations have gone? Yeah, knowledge is power. Uh, those guys have come in with tremendous knowledge, uh, the tremendous love for the game. Uh, they're going to get to know these guys. Uh, every guy that has met with them has come out with their eyes wide open. Coach, yeah, where to go? You know, one of the biggest things I could uh, I could give these guys is a compliment from John Robinson. John Robinson, as you know, is a consultant for me, and sat in an offensive meeting and he comes out rejuvenated. He says, "Coach, you got the right guys. This is going to be great." If John believes in it, I believe in it too. And obviously in the past, you know, there have been breakdowns like, you know, one handles third downs, red zone, things like that. What do you imagine the responsibility breakdown between DJ and Jake to be? No, we're going to talk about it. Obviously, uh, obviously Jake's the offensive coordinator. DJ's the passing game coordinator. Uh, we're going to see what's best. We haven't actually talk, talked about that, but I do see them up in the box together, just like Steve and Joe were and, and – uh, him helping Jake call the plays. We haven't discussed third down yet, how we're going to do it, red zone, how we're going to do it. Uh, but whatever's best between those two, whatever the best fit is, is what we're going to do. And um, <clears throat> these guys seem to be your first two choices on, yeah. on offense. Yeah. Obviously, you didn't, you didn't get your guy on defense, but this is yeah. not unusual. Just talk about the, the – uh, you didn't get ready to be your first choice, but talk about – how the coaching search goes. This, yeah. You often don't get your very first choice. And yeah. The fact that you got two of them is probably pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? Really, the, the priority for me was getting the right guys on offense because that's not my specialty. And uh, I knew that uh, I could wait and get the right guys on defense, and I think we're going to get them. I know we're going to get them. And uh, I have a good feeling who it's going to be. Uh, I just have to be patient and, and wait, uh, wait till the right time. Uh, but knowing that I can I can help on the defense, it gives me some security. Knowing that we can wait and get the right guys. we still got three spots open, but I feel good that it's going to be the right people. We've interviewed some outstanding guys. It just wasn't the right fit. Either wasn't the right fit for me or wasn't the right fit for them, maybe too far away from home or stuff like that. But we did go after the top guys that were available. But we do have a couple of guys that I think that are special. I just have to wait till the right time. Yeah, uh, yeah, and how, how was it uh, important for you to, uh, I guess, kind of go younger? Uh, yeah. Somebody is late 30s, early 40s. Not yeah. saying old people are good. Yeah. I'm old, but, yeah. but I mean, going younger to relate to the players and to understand yeah. modern offenses. Exactly. Younger knows the spread. <laughs> I mean, those young guys know the spread. We weren't born in the spread. We, were, we weren't raised in the spread, so – uh, those guys were experts in the spread. They just happened to be young, but they're bright and they're very smart, innovative. Uh, they come from a different era. Uh, we we were hard nosed football coaches, basic football coaches. Uh, get after them. These guys, powerpoints, organization, very smart. You know, you go in, you go into an offensive meeting, you could be at IBM. <laughs> this guy runs. He's very smart, and, it, and it's just different. And uh, they were raised in a different uh, era. And I'm glad that we brought it to LSU. Coach, you mentioned uh, that the, the guys really impressed you since they've been in the building and in the facility. Uh, what have they done that's kind of – or is there anything you can point to that's really demonstrated that or you know, really you know, surprised you? You know, I, th I think the uh, organization, uh, the, the details in which they they're go about their business, uh, looking at our tape and making corrections already, uh, bringing in some new uh, plays, new style. Uh, this is a new voice, new energy, uh, new thoughts. Uh, 
you know, that, that, you know, change is good. And I, like I said, Steve Mazzamiga did a tremendous job. But I think we got as much as we can out of him. I know he's joined retirement. He's going to come back as an analyst. I think he'll be proud to see. We, we're going all spread. We're going everything that we can with the spread offense. And you see the innovative offenses in the SEC. We want to be just like them. We were just like them. You know, the offense scored a lot of points this year. But we, there's a lot of things that we can get better at. And uh, first of all, the fundamentals, the effort, the coaching. and But we got a lot of good players coming back. We got a lot of great coaches coming back. I can't wait to get on the field with them. Hey, Coach, um, now that the season is over, reflecting back on the use of the running backs and the running back rotation and everything, I just want to get your kind of thoughts on that and how you go moving forward. It seemed like sometimes, like Tyron Davis Price would have three big runs, you score a touchdown, and then he goes out of the game and yeah. the night comes. Yeah, we got to talk about that. I want to talk about that with Jake. I want to see his philosophy. Uh, you know, we want to keep everybody happy in the running back room. Obviously, it's, it's hard to do. And LSU historically has had two or three backs that let them play. You know, I was here with Frank Wilson. He, he let those guys play. But uh, I want to talk to Jake, and uh, we're going to come up with a plan between uh, me, Jake, and Kevin. Hey, good morning, Ed. Uh, you talked about the fit, and, and I think we can all understand what that means. But when you're doing these job interviews, um, specifically on the defensive side now, how involved do you want them to get? Are you talking? Because I heard on the radio show you talked about 4 3 3 4 doesn't really matter. Yeah. Because you play a lot of nickel and stuff. Is there something that you feel this is what fits me? Yeah. And clearly this yeah. doesn't? Or is it a player personnel issue? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, first of all, when I look at. Uh, a candidate, I want to see how the players are going to feel. Number one, is he going to be able to connect to our players? I think I think that's one of the most important things as a coach. And, and I want to protect our players, and I want a coach that's going to love them, but is also going to get them better. And uh, when that coach gets up in front of our offensive defense, is he going to have a presence? Is he, is he going to command – that they listen to them and get better. So I think that's the number one thing I look for. Number two is fundamentals. I want a fundamental coach, man. I'm a fundamental guy. Whether it's a 4-3 or 3-4, myself, personally, I think you have to have both. <laughs> I mean, you know, with the offenses, uh, I didn't see anybody shutting down these offenses this year. So as defensive coaches, we need to learn how to do it. So I've interviewed some coaches that are very good, have some very good uh, ideas. and uh, But I think that we haven't found the right fit yet, but we're going to. Got time for uh, one more, Ed. Coach, um, forgive me if, if, if you answered this earlier, but is it an open quarterback competition this spring? And, uh, you know, how do you look at that? Because it's a very yeah. crowded room. Yeah, it's very interesting. You know, obviously, and I need to, it's a new offense. I need to talk to Jake. Uh, we need to make some decisions there. And uh, But those decisions, are we're not ready to announce that. Obviously, somebody's going to have to take the first snap, but it's always going to be a competition. It's always going to be the best guy plays, the quarterback, the offensive line, the wide receivers. It's always a competition. Thank you, Thank you guys. Go Tigers. Well, uh, Jake, up next, just uh, if you could introduce yourself, uh, maybe ask a question for Jake. How's everybody doing? Oh, you're on mute. So, hold on, I'm still good. We'll just uh, get right started. Let that shine. How's everybody doing? Brandon, you want me to just go? I didn't know if he was talking. Yeah, you can go ahead. Do you guys, hey, first of all, I just want to say, you know, my family, my wife Maggie and I are very excited to move. Uh, our six kids down here to Baton Rouge. We're very grateful to Coach Ogeron for the opportunity for believing in us. And by us, I mean uh, DJ and myself. And I know you're going to talk to him here soon, but uh, DJ is somebody that I had the privilege of working with, with Joe and Carolina, somebody I believe in, and I think greatly contributes to the strength of our staff here. And that's something, you know, we are a, a we, not me. Uh, group over here. Like, we have great strength in our staff. Coach Ogeron talked about Coach Robinson. It was fun, you know, being in our first offensive staff meeting yesterday and looking over there and seeing a legend of a coach there. 
And Coach Ensminger and I have spent time here. He came up to the office uh, yesterday, and, and he's a guy that Joe Brady talked about, you know, being a great, humble leader. And that's something about this, right? You know, leadership is, a, is an extreme sport that requires courage and humility. And that's something that I think he embodies. I know Coach Ogeron does. Joe Brady does. So those are great people, you know, in addition to many others that have helped me get to where I'm at right now. But I think that those are great examples of people that we want to emulate and that we want our players, therefore, to emulate. And when we do those type of things, we're going to put an exciting brand of football and have exciting brand of, of men, you know, out there in the world, not just playing football. So, uh, again, my family and I are very excited, very proud to be a part of this great organization. And I look forward to, to hearing what you guys uh, want to ask. Uh, hey, Coach. Um, this is Shay Dixon with 24-7 Sports. Um, Coach Joe had talked about wanting to go back to the 2019 offense that uh, Joe Brady and Insminger and Angus were all a part of. Mm -hmm. um, when you watch film or, or just from what you know, obviously, uh, what jumps out to you about how you would describe that philosophy of being? Well, it's something that I greatly believe in. You know, I, I believe in that passing game. You know, Joe Brady really helped me learn that at a different level. It's similar in some ways to what we ran in Washington when I was with Sean McVay, some similar concepts. But what you see is you see great confidence in those players. Like, they had great preparation. Preparation is what leads to confidence. And I think when you have that, when you have guys that have been in the grassroots of that system, that you're able to teach the players that to an elite level, and then you let their talent take over. It's something that we've got to demand from them every day, starting with the first opportunity we get with them to the very last one. We've got to be extremely demanding with these young men, and we can only do that if we're demanding of ourselves as a staff. And that's where we have a great staff from top down. And that's one of the first thing I did was I reached out to each position coach, each analyst, each GA. These guys are extremely important in this. And for DJ and I, we want to learn from them and try to teach them the way that we've been taught so that we have great strength and power in this staff, so that we sharpen each other, we pass ideas along to each other, we challenge each other, so that when we get to our players, we have a very defined product. We have defined roles, defined responsibility, so that they can play with great confidence because of the preparation that goes into it. Hey, Jake, this is uh, Michael Cowboy. I work at the ABC TV station here in town. Excellent. Uh, I think most of us have a, a basic understanding of the spread concepts, but there's certainly different flavors to it. How would you describe what you guys uh, favor, would like to try to implement, and you know some things that we've seen with the Saints and, and you know their offensive attack versus what we see in the SEC with the need for a balanced you know running game sure. within there as well. Uh, how do you how do you marry those two? That's a great uh, question, Michael. What do, what do you want to see? What I want to see is our players in the best position to make plays. What are they great at? And that's something we've been spending a lot of time with, with our staff, is going over what schemes fit our players. What's the best way for us to run the ball? What's the best way for attack? Because that's what we want to do. We want to aggressively attack the defense at all fronts. And we want to play the game the way we want to play the game. But we need to know ourselves first. We've got to understand what our players do great and what they don't do. And we obviously want to play to their strengths. So. What we are doing in this system, uh, like the spread system, is we want to define what things our players do at a very high level, and we want to amplify that. We want to adjust it, keep changing it so people can't set their watch to what we're doing and how we're doing it, and we want to involve everybody. And like a question got asked to Coach Ogeron about the running back, and I'll, so I'll just go ahead and talk about that in case you guys want to know. Like if our best personnel grouping has multiple backs on the field, let's do it. We have great playmakers here. And that's our job as coaches, and that's my responsibility as the offensive coordinator to make sure that those young men are prepared and that they're on the field to attack the defense. And whatever that looks like, something that we did in Carolina with Joe, we went five wides. We've had two backs on the field, no tight ends. We can run multiple tight end sets. We want this to be an exciting place for our players first. Those are the most important people of the organization, the people that we have here. But then also as we recruit the best players in the country, to know that you come here, that we will find a way to get you on the field, we'll prepare you, get you on the field to play with confidence and attack. Whoever we got, the best players we got, you're going to see them on the field. 
Jake Brody Miller with the Athletic here. I mean, you've been around several first-time play callers in your career. I guess mm -hmm. there, what kind of lessons and things have you learned from that going into this? I'll tell you what. You learn that it's not even so much about the X's and O's at the beginning. It really isn't. Like the last, uh, the first two days here, we're bleeding into the third day. DJ and I have been in here. Is all about getting to know our players, because without trust, there is no relationship. We can't ask these guys to go do these things. We can't be demanding of them in a positive way and really challenge them unless they feel that we believe in them. So it's not just studying the film, that's part of it, but getting face-to-face -face with these guys, not even talking football. Like, that that's not even the concern right now. I, these guys can play football. They're here, right? So, But it's about learning these people. It's about them learning me, learning DJ. You know, talking about, like, I, my wife, Maggie, this, none of this is possible without her. And I have six wonderful kids I can't wait to see this weekend. Uh, but I want them to know about my family. You know, they can't be family if they don't feel comfortable coming over to my house or if I'm not bringing my family around them. Because when we build that, then we're going to be able to get into the football. Then we have trust. Then we have belief. And then we can really, you know, we can magnify what these guys do. And I think that's what you saw again in the 2019 season is that there was great trust, commitment, and belief. And that's something that, you know, obviously this last year there were a lot of challenges. There were challenges for us in Carolina this year. And it was an exceptional example to see how Joe Brady ran an offense in a pandemic, how Matt Rule as a head coach did an elite job organizing his people. I was on the phone with him last night thanking him, like just the way that he led, that Joe led, have really helped prepare me for this situation. And, and the other people, like I'm working with Sean McVay as a first-time play caller, seeing how Sean handled the situation, seeing how it is about getting your staff organized, learning your players, and then delving in what they do well. And then Todd Downing in Oakland, I thought there were some things he really did good as an, from an organizational standpoint that I'm emulating here. Scott Turner is the other one. And, and something, too, like a great influence on me, you talk about first-time play callers, but then Norm Chow, you know, Norv Turner, Jay Gruden, some of the elite play callers, I think, in the game. Uh, and that's why I feel very blessed to be in the position I'm in. And a big part of it, like Mike Loxley at uh, Alabama uh, was an elite play caller. And, you know, being around these people have allowed me to achieve to the level. And I'm excited about the opportunity and showing that what these people invested in me, uh, invested in me was very well invested. Hey, Jake, Brooks Camino from The Advocate uh, here in town. Um, you talk about scheme and all the things that you've learned over these years. You know, once it gets into the game, you know, with in-game adjustments, strategy there, how do you approach that? Do you consider that a strength, and how do you organize that with the staff while you're up there in the booth? Yeah, I'll tell you. Hey, Brooks, are you the one that called every single person that I've ever talked to about football in my past? I, uh, yeah. yeah, okay. I had text messages from people I hadn't even heard from in years, so I applaud you for, uh, for your work ethic. Uh, but anyway, that's a great question, Brooks. Uh, that's where you rely on the strength of the staff and Coach Ogeron as well. We, we've been through a lot of things situationally. All of us have been different places and learned from different people, and that's where when we communicate, communication is the critical element of everything, right? So as we communicate with each other, we prepare ourselves. Coach Ogeron, when I interviewed up here, there's, there's a part of our organization where we spend time preparing, studying, communicating these special situations. And that's something that I do feel like we can draw an edge from. But just dealing with, and again, when it's all about we, not me, we draw on everybody's expertise, which is going to allow us to achieve in those situations because we'll be able to prepare ourselves and our players for when those things happen. Hey, Jake, Wilson Alexander, also from The Advocate. Pleasure to be speaking with you. Thanks, Wilson. I said a minute ago that, you know, it's an interesting, you know, sort of situation you'll have at quarterback. What have you learned about those guys over the last few days? And um, although you haven't been able to actually practice with them, how would you sort of evaluate them? Like, I'll tell you what, we have some exceptional young men. And getting a chance to talk with these guys and getting a chance to talk with their uh, most of their parents at this point as well, you can see it's by no accident. These are really good young men that are obviously very talented, but they're good young men that I'm excited to work with and help grow them not only as players but as people. And we have great skill sets in there. I wouldn't say any of them are the same, which is good, right? I mean, that's a good thing where we can draw different things. We can attack defenses in a different way. But it's been a pleasure to get to know these guys, and I look forward to continuing to grow that.
Hey, Jake. Uh, this is Glenn West with LSU Country here. Um, you mentioned hi, Glenn. A few minutes ago that, yeah, yeah, hi. Uh, you mentioned a few minutes ago that obviously you uh, uh, spent some time with Joe Brady last year. I mean, I'm just curious, what was one thing that maybe you learned from him above all else that kind of helped you in your, you know, your first year here? And then just also, what are your first impressions of some of these players? I know you it was very early, but I mean, just what, what kind of guys do you think you have on this on this team? Sure. Well, I'll tell you what, Joe Brady uh, and DJ spent a lot more time with him, right? Like they played college football together and, and they've grown up for, um, together. Uh, for me, Joe Brady, I've spent more time with him than any human being, including my wife, uh, this last year. So, like, he's a guy that I love not only as a football coach, but even more as a friend. Like, this is a guy that uh, means a lot to me personally as well as professionally. I wouldn't be here without him. And he invested a lot in me this last year. And I tried to learn from every opportunity I got from him and then add, and hopefully he felt like he grew from his experiences with me as well. What Joe has, he has such grace with how he delivers his thoughts. Joe is, and you guys, I'm assuming most of you guys were around for the 19th season and got an opportunity to speak with him. But he's, he's elite with intelligence. But the way that he communicates, and not just with me, I was his quarterback coach, but with the players. And he helped me to make some things a little more simple. You know, like we helped shape each other's thoughts, but there were times where I thought he helped me take it from uh, advanced math to, to maybe algebra one, which in learning these systems, it's not about what I know, it's about what these guys know. It's not about what we know, it's what they can learn and retain and play fast with. And then you asked uh, Glenn about our team. What I'm seeing is great excitement from these guys. Like Coach O brought up, we have this offensive line back. And this was big. We talked about the roster a lot when I came up here last week. We have competitive kids. We have guys that are hungry. You, you don't come to LSU unless you want to compete. But we have skill positions that can stretch the field. We have running backs that can run the ball and catch the ball out of the backfield and stretch it. And we have guys that just want to compete. That's the thing that's been over and over meeting with these guys. They want an opportunity to compete, and they want to get better. Hi, Jake. This is Ed Daniels from Hi, Ed. the ABC Community in New Orleans. How are you, sir? Doing great, thank you. Great. Uh, question. You have really some contrasting styles in the quarterback room. You have a couple mm -hmm. guys who are, who are primarily pocket passers, and then you have Max, who is a, um, a, a little more of a, of a run-pass guy. H how will you reconcile that in, in how you get the offense you know, prepared because you, you've got two different quarterback styles in that room. Sure, and Ed, I appreciate that assessment, and I think that you're right in some of that. I do feel like all these guys can play in any style of offense that we want them to play in. Like Max is a guy that you're right, he can move, and he has some mobility to him, but if you look at his calmness and his footwork in the pocket, like this guy can play pro-style football now. Like this guy can play in the pocket, he can sling it. We can do some different things moving it. And I would say the same thing. For uh, Brennan, he, he can move the pocket. He has very good balance. He's a guy that can sling it well, really like his lower half. And then you have TJ. TJ's a big man now. Like we were, we were talking earlier today, seeing him the first time reminded me a lot of when I first came to Carolina and seeing Cam Newton. I mean, these are big men. He is extremely talented. He's a guy that can flick the wrist and the ball blows up off of it. Uh, he's a guy that, you know, I think that you may not categorize him as a guy that can run and escape the pocket, but there are great examples on film where he's able to move up and over. And the thing about TJ is when he escapes, he can attack you at every level of the field. I mean, he's like Steph Curry hitting threes from the parking lot with where he can reach you with his arm. And then we have Garrett Nussmeyer. You know, Garrett is, you know, tore up 6A football in the state of Texas. He's a guy that is extremely competitive, just like all these guys are extremely competitive. But he's a guy that I'm excited to see how he can move out of the pocket, in the pocket. All these kids, there's not a limiting factor to their game saying, well, we can't play this style of football. But either way, whoever the quarterback is and whenever it is that they play, we're going to play to their strengths. Do we have time for uh, one more question? Yeah, Coach Amos Morales from WWL Radio in New Orleans. Uh, hey, Amos. You spent most of your, you spent most of your career uh, in the pros. Uh, I'm just curious as to what about this job kind of made you want to make the move to college football? That's a great question. This is not something – I had a couple of my close friends, they hit me up and they said, is this true? You know, like I, I did. Most of my career has been in the NFL. I've spent a couple years at Alabama. I was here at UCLA. And – 
um, as Brooks knows, because he got a hold of the head coach I worked for there. I was at Santa Barbara City College. Uh, but here's the thing. It's LSU. Like, you look at the players that you, that you get to work with here. Most of these guys, I mean, well, all of these guys that are walking into my office and introduce themselves, they all look like they're in the NFL. They look like the same guys I was with at Carolina or anywhere else. But the thing that really drew me here, you know, Joe talking to me about it and his great experience that he had here and that the people that are here, it was a difficult decision. I love working for Matt Rule. You know, Mr. David Tepper is an outstanding owner with the Carolina Panthers. And I love working for Joe Brady there. My wife and kids, we love it in Charlotte. We would not have left if it wasn't a unique opportunity here. And Coach Ogeron coached uh, one of my wife's brothers, actually, at Ole Miss. And so when it first got brought up, I don't know, maybe a week ago, when my days are running together, but I brought it up to my wife. You know, we're, we're a team. My, my, my wife, I'll tell you what, when you're raising six kids, it's the most competitive team sport there is. And if you guys can manufacture a situation that's more hairy than bath time with six kids, I think we'll be able to handle fourth and goal. Uh, but if she didn't sign off on it, I wouldn't, have taken, I wouldn't take any job. And for her, her brother George, who is a, a special, the special teams coordinator at Maryland for Mike Loxley, who I worked with at Alabama, he loves Coach O. He always spoke about Coach O. My wife has loved her experiences with Coach O. When I came up here, I felt that. And I know that this is a special place. And like I talked about the power of the staff, we have great position coaches. We have great analysts. Any of these guys could be up for any of these jobs. You know what I'm saying? And that's part of my job is to help develop these people as uh, men and coaches as well, and we'll develop each other. But had it not been such a special place like LSU with Coach Ogeron and all those people I talked about, as well as having great players, you know, th this wouldn't have been something that I would have entertained, but we're very excited to be coming down here, and my family will be here as soon as we possibly can get them here. We appreciate it, Jake. Thanks for your time. You bet. Thank you. Appreciate you all. Nice job, Okay, we have a DJ next. If you can put in the... How's it going, DJ? Good. Uh, give us a little intro and uh, talk about accepting the job. Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys having me. I'm obviously uh, beyond fired up to, to be back. Uh, you guys are well aware that I was here in 2019, so to know that I've got the opportunity and a greater role to be a part of a program like LSU and a program that's capable of doing the things that we did in 2019 and an offense that was capable or is capable of doing what we were able to accomplish then it's, um, you know, it's obviously an opportunity that I, I couldn't say no to, and I'm, I'm just beyond excited to be here. Hey, DJ, Billy Embody with 24-7 Sports. Welcome back. Uh, how much did, did Jake lean on you uh, in this process as far as feedback on, on what coming to LSU would look like for him? And then you know, how much did you guys kind of uh, talk with Joe about the opportunity as well? Yeah, well, obviously, I've got some insight there just being here in 2019. And, and I know Jake leaned on a lot of people. You know, there's a lot of people that have been involved in this process. But uh, there, there was communication between the two of us. And, and I had, as you can imagine, nothing but great things to say, um, you know, about this place and this program and, and the people that are here. So, um, you know, there was definitely conversation. I know uh, between him and I, there was obviously conversation with Joe as well. So, uh, you know, I leaned on him as well, you know, just uh, thinking about different things going into it. But, uh, yeah, it was, there was constant communication throughout the process. Hey, DJ. Hey, Brody Miller with The Athletic. I mean, you know, you were obviously an OC at 28 years old, and maybe that didn't go to plan. But I guess what did you kind of learn from that two-year experience and kind of, you know, three years later to be here? Yeah, it's, um, you know, I think uh, sometimes in, in a lot of cases you can learn from some of the hard times more than you can learn from the good times. And, and it's kind of crazy to look back and think on, uh, you know, maybe it didn't necessarily go as planned, but to walk into an opportunity where I was able to be a part of that at William and & Mary. And, um, and, and obviously there was a lot of good that came from that experience. And then walk into LSU where you're part of one of the greatest, arguably the greatest offense that college football has ever seen in a 15-0 and team. And to be able to see what it takes uh, to be – playing at that level as an offense and as a team, and then to go to the NFL and to be able to experience that at the highest level. Um, you know, there was just a lot that was learned in that time to see what it takes to be that good. 
Um, so those were clearly the biggest takeaways for me that have prepared me to, for this opportunity and, and to be back here at LSU. Hey, DJ, uh, Jacques Gisset, WAFB TV here in Baton Rouge. Uh, just curious, I, I guess none of us know what spring football is going to look like or what it's going to be, but, but how anxious and how excited are, are you and Jake to, to do some things in spring and just, I guess, in a broad sense, what do you want to accomplish in spring football? Yeah, no, I'm fired up. I mean, it, it's one day at a time here. Um, you know, obviously I'm looking to, to get on the field with these guys uh, and get the ball rolling in that sense. But as Jake touched on, it's, it's relationships. It's building those relationships with the staff and the players leading up to that. So, you know, my focus is there right now and getting to know the players because there's, you know, even though I was here just, you know, a little over a year ago or less than a year ago, there's, there's still a lot of guys that uh, were young or that we recruited that are now part of the roster that, uh, I'm looking forward to getting to know better, um, you know, and, and learning and, uh, and getting to know them from that aspect so we can figure out what they're capable of on the field and, and putting them in position to succeed. Hey, DJ Brooks Cabina from The Advocate. Um, uh, I'm curious from your time here as an analyst in, in Baton Rouge and then working with Joe Brady again, Carolina, you know, now that you're the passing game coordinator here, what are the things – you're, you're kind of taking from those past experiences now now that you're in this role what do you what do you feel like you get to do now that you're in this position yeah I think what Joe and, and Steve were able to do in 2019 was maximize the talent that we had the, the talent is always here at LSU and I think with Joe and just observing it and being around it and, and being a part of it that's the biggest thing putting your players in position to succeed you know using the whole field from sideline to sideline making all 11 defenders defend the field and, and then putting your players in position to succeed. Like I said, taking what the defense gives you uh, and maximizing the talent you have, keeping it simple, but applying pressure on the defense at the same time. So between that uh, at LSU in 2019 and this year with the Panthers, I think uh, that that's the biggest takeaway for me. And, and that's what I look forward to doing with Jake and, and the rest of the staff and the offense that we have right now. Stick. Um, lots of questions. I, I don't really know where to start, but um, the one that intrigues me the most is just William and Mary. You know, I've seen that campus. I've uh, been to Williamsburg. Just how were you all able to, I guess, get this ball rolling, uh, take college football by storm last year, and, and now continue this evolution of, of where the offenses are kind of moving in college football? What, what was the genesis of all yeah, well, I mean, if you look at William & Mary, Mike Tomlin, Sean McDermott, amongst others, it's, it's got a pretty rich tradition of, uh, of coaches out there that are doing really well. Um, so I, I just think uh, the, the combination of, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't good enough to necessarily, I wasn't talented enough to keep playing, but the passion was always there. And to go to William & Mary, you, you kind of have to be pretty smart. So I think when you combine the, the, the smarts, with the willingness to work and the passion for the game, I think uh, you can see that with Joe Brady, and, and hopefully you can see that with me. Uh, and, and that should take you places. And, and usually, uh, you know, you, you walk away from William & Mary, you see a lot of people, the graduates, the intangibles that those people possess. Uh, a lot of them apply to, to doing well in life and doing well as a coach. So uh, I, I think those things have carried over, and you, you just take it one day at a time, one job at a time, and um, you know, and, and that usually adds up and, and leads you to, to good places and great places like LSU, uh, um, you know, that I'm obviously excited to be a part of. Hey, DJ, this is uh, Glenn West with LSU Country. Um, you know, traditionally, you know, the last couple of years, the passing game coordinators kind of handled third down and red zone here. Uh, I'm just curious, you know, over the last couple of years, what you've been able to learn about, you know, what it takes to be most efficient in the red zone and, and also on third down. Yeah, well, I think on third down, you have to be able to protect first. You know, I, we can come up with the best concepts in the world, but if you can't protect and give your quarterback time to throw the ball, it, it's irrelevant. So I, I think it starts there with having a great protection plan. And then obviously the concepts, putting your players, again, like I said, in position to succeed based upon what the defense has given you, based upon, upon what their, you know, their trends and their tendencies are, those types of things. And then in the red zone, it, it's the same type of thing, just having a plan, preparing, uh, and putting the work in and, and figuring out what the defense likes to do down there. And, and again, just, just putting your players in position to succeed uh, when it comes down there. you got to get a little creative and, um, uh, you know, uh, look into it maybe a little bit more than you would in your, your base down, your core plan to, uh, I think, to do well down there. DJ uh, Scott Rabelais, also with the advocate. Um, 
as you as you well know from from your your college experience, it's not just about schemes; it's about players. So, it's a, you're leaving the NFL where it's all football, and, and here it's at least half the battle is, is recruiting. Just talk about you know re recruiting, the importance of it. What what, what you, do you have a philosophy? What kind of players you'll be looking for? That sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, you can see it as a battle. I, I think of it, you know, Jake and I were talking yesterday about how rewarding it could be. You know, getting to know the families, the parents, the players, uh, and developing that relationship and seeing them grow as men, 18 to 22-year-olds. Obviously, there's a lot of growing they have to do, not just on the field, but off the field. So uh, I think just looking for high-character players, uh, you know, beyond the talent is first and foremost in, in the type of families and the background that they come from uh, that can help build this program and help help this program win. And then obviously you want to seek players that are playmakers and, and are uh, you know looking to make plays and possess the talent as well. But uh, in, in my mind, it's, uh, it's those types of things, the intangibles. Uh, I think that's where you start, um, and that's how you build um, you know, a great offense as well. Appreciate it. I was curious. You had been in college for so long, obviously, that spending a year in the NFL was the kind of biggest thing you learned. Whether it's for how you adjust coaching the players or how you adjust going about, you know, being a coach and your weekly schedule, what kind of jumped out at you about? Um, well, yeah. Well, I, I think my time at William and Mary, and, and obviously LSU, prepared me pretty well. I mean, you're dealing with a lot of guys that. Uh, you're coaching the type of talent that is going to be seen in the NFL. So, so really, it wasn't as much of an adjustment on that end, coaching those types of players in the NFL. You know, as we just talked about the recruiting, um, you know, uh, class checks, those types of things. It, you know, you obviously don't have to worry about at that level. But um, it really, I felt very prepared being in Carolina with the Panthers because of my time here at LSU. Josh Sibley with Louisiana Gridiron Football. Um, Coach Peach kind of uh, men mentioned uh, speaking face-to-face uh, uh, -face to, to players, um, and you, you kind of touched on recruiting earlier. Uh, have you spoken to any players that might have opted out uh, earlier in this season or might be on the bubble um, uh, uh, about leaving um, uh, for next season? Yeah, I, I'm just concerned with the players that are here right right now, right here, right now. Those are the guys that I've I've talked to, and I'm I'm looking forward to getting to know, and and that's where my focus is. Okay, thanks, coach. Hey, coach. Uh, DJ Brooks again from the Advocate. Um, you mentioned third downs a little bit earlier there. Um, ask Jake about this earlier. It, it seems like with any scheme, it, a lot of it comes down to in-game adjustments in in the game. You were obviously a part of that in '19. How, how have you and Jake kind of talked about organizing that? He told he talked a little bit about how that's part of the plan as well, um, uh, the preparation before games. Uh, what is kind of the strategy there? Well, I think you have to know your answers ahead of time. You know, you, it's it's the preparation right now that adds up during the season. Uh, you know, if you're you're preparing for something going into a game, and if you guys remember in 2019, I mean, the first half of the season or excuse me, the second half of the season, it was like we saw some defenses I don't know that anybody's seen before. Um, so it's just you have a core set of, uh, of your offense, and, and you lean on that. And when you see something maybe you, you haven't anticipated, uh, you know your answers already because you've prepared. You've prepared in the off season, You've prepared in the summer, and, and the players know it, and you can go to those things. So to me, it just comes down to preparation and, and knowing your answers. Awesome. That's all we got time for. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Good to be back. Go Tigers. <laughs>